I think if more creators did this, they, they would be a lot happier and I think the internet would be a, a very, very different place. I'm going through I'm going through the notes app on my phone. I have a document folder on my phone with uh, like running YouTube titles and typically when like an idea pops in my head or I flush out a, a, a idea that's already on the list, I'll do it there. Like I'll write down everything that's just currently in my head and kind of like refine it over the course of whenever I'm whenever I'm thinking about it. And uh, I'm going through that that folder right now, and I'm coming across a note that I wrote at the beginning of the year, if not in, in December of last year. And all I have is the title, but the title is the most powerful thing you can do in 2024. And then underneath it, it says, "Make what you want." I think if more creators did this, they they would be a lot happier, and I think the internet would be a, a very very different place. But they don't and I'm gonna talk about it. Before I got monetized, there was this, this freedom and this ability to just pretty much post whatever I wanted and I really wouldn't care like if it got views or if it was received well or, or anything because as long as I was happy with the product, then that's, that's all that matters. And since I've got monetized, that's still the goal. That's still like my overarching, like that's, that's my, that's how I determine if I'm gonna post something on the internet or not, is if I'm happy with it. But I would be lying to say that there isn't that little influence in the back of my head of is this video gonna do well because if it does then I get paid more. Now that's not the driving factor or force for me personally, but I do, I do feel that pressure, like it's an added pressure onto what was previously, there, there wasn't. And I can't imagine that I'm the only one that, that feels that. And I think it's important to push back against that for a couple of reasons. The, the funny part is, as I'm, uh, as I'm talking to you about this, I'm actually flushing this idea out. Uh, and I just had a bunch of like little sub points that just came to, came to mind. So I'm currently, I'm currently writing it down as a, this is a very fluid thing. <laughs> Trend topping is something that you can get ex exponential growth from and it can really help your channel across all platforms with it, like TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, all of them. Trend hopping can be very, very beneficial to a channel. But like everything in life, uh, trend hopping has a shelf value and it, it can only get you so far. In the short term, it can get you, it has the potential to get you a lot of, a lot of growth. Everything that any aspiring creator is seeking. But I think the trick is to know the reasons why you're doing the trend to begin with. Are you you doing it simply just to reach people that you potentially wouldn't get and create further create a community of people with common interests or are you simply just doing it to get a lot of numbers I think if your goal is the first one just to try to further your community and expand your community then I think trend hopping is a, is a good thing because you're not going to be doing every single trend but I think if you're doing it for the second reason of just trying to get views then you're gonna find yourself doing one trend after another after another and that's going to get really one exhausting for you but two there's not gonna be really any real substance or any genuine like creativity that's going to sustain you or sustain your audience in the long term so I think trend hopping is, is, is it's a good thing and I think doing it is definitely a needed thing in the space if you want to grow quickly but I think knowing what the the end goal is 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 important when you're doing it I really wanted to do anything like I've just been really really tired and the only thing that's keeping me from like just not doing anything is because I genuinely enjoy and love what I get to do and that leads me to my second point which is going to be if you're just trying to do what like works or what sells but you're not actually passionate about the thing there's there's a couple of side effects that are going to affect the longevity of you being able to sustain what it takes to be successful in like any kind of creation or video creation creativity uh, kind of space. One, if you're not genuine, people are typically gonna be able to figure that out while, by watching enough of, your, enough of your content. And then the second one, and probably the most important one, is if you don't enjoy doing it, then it's gonna be harder to like continue to do it because if you hate doing it, and if you hate making whatever the content is, is based on, then it's gonna always feel like, it's always gonna feel like work. And to me, that's probably the most important thing. Like if I if I had to make videos about something that I wasn't genuinely like interested in, then it would just, it would feel like work and I would hate doing it and I probably wouldn't do it. I think the biggest secret is just going to be, just do, be yourself on camera. If you're yourself on camera, you're you're going to, it's just gonna yield a better, a better product. When you first start out, you're gonna feel awkward. You're gonna not like the way your voice sounds or whatever. There's a million things that you're going to like pick at. But if you keep at it, those things over time will refine themselves uh, or you'll just simply get used to them. I think the biggest secret is to really just make content that you're proud of and you enjoy and everything else, everything else will, 
will follow. That's basically what I'm trying to say. Also, the walk, I ended up going for a walk, but uh, I was I had a phone call, and the phone call was just so intense that I forgot to shoot anything. That's why there was a lack of B-roll and a lack of context with that, that sequence outside, if, if that makes sense.